Automatic headlights are a technology that's been around for a while, much longer than automatic high beams have. I'll have a video on that subject as well, it'll be at the end of this video, but for now we're just going to cover automatic headlights. Now, it starts with an ECU or a BCM, that's engine control unit, body control module. There's a bunch of different other names for computers, but it's all essentially the same. It's just the computer that controls when the headlights can go on and off. Now, in the early days of electric headlights, a switch on the dashboard would direct power directly to a light and there wouldn't be any kind of control computer involved in that at all. And you'd think that with a switch that has an on position and an auto, the auto position would go to the computer and then the on position would bypass the computer and just go to the headlight. Now that can technically be done, but most of the time even your on position is just going to the computer and the computer is going, oh, I need to turn the headlights on. And it does that. So in that, even an on switch is an input device. A signal goes into the in, on your computer, your ECU, we'll call it that from now on, and then the ECU does some thinking and decides what to output. The computer needs to decide, is it appropriate to turn the headlights on now? When the driver's saying, hey, turn the headlights on, that's an appropriate time. But what if the driver wants the computer to do the deciding for them? With that switch, the driver is sensing whether or not turning the headlights on is appropriate. If it's really dark outside, the driver senses that, flips the switch, and the headlights are on. So, in order for a computer to do that, it needs to be able to sense something. That's where this comes in. This, in most basic terms, is just a daylight sensor. Inside this dome can be one of two things. A photoresistor, which is something that changes the resistance based on how much light is hitting it, or just like a solar cell where if light comes in and hits it, then it generates electricity, and the more light hits it, the more electricity it generates. Both of those operate differently, but they do the same thing. Whenever there's a lot of light coming in, the computer can use the information it expects from that sensor and make a decision based on that. This right here is a simple drawing of that photo sensor, so we'll take data from that sensor and bring it to the input on this computer. Now this computer knows what it's sensing from this sensor. So if it's bright outside, as long as this sensor works, light is coming in and affecting it in a way that's going to change what the electric signal is going to this computer, and the computer will know it's daylight out, or it's bright enough outside that we can leave the headlights off. However, there'll be a certain threshold where when it gets dark enough, the computer goes, okay, it's time, I can turn my headlights on. Now, once this computer has made a decision, it needs to have an output so it can act on that decision. So we have output right here, wire comes out, and technically we'd have a relay right here. I'm not gonna assume everyone knows how a relay works, but if you've been subscribed to the channel, you would, because I've made a video on it. I'll link to that video in the description below and at the end of this video. So we'll move on with it simplified because this channel is car simplified. And we're going to our low beams. I'm just gonna draw the switch in here too. So this is starting to look a little complicated. I'm going to run through all this before we move on to the next bit. But in summary, off is just going to be off. Your signal goes to the computer. The computer goes, oh, they want it off. We'll do that. Same with on. You send a signal via the switch to the computer that you want it on. The computer goes, oh, it doesn't matter what's going on. We need to have those headlights turn on. And it does that. It sends an output to those headlights to turn them on. If you set it to auto, then you send an auto signal to your ECU, and the ECU has to consider, is it appropriate to turn the headlights on right now at any given moment? Luckily, the ECU has this sensor that it can go to and figure out what the brightness outside is. Depending on how much light is actually hitting this sensor, it can use that information to decide, I need to turn the headlights on because it's dark, or I need to turn them off because we were under a bridge and now it's back out into the light, we don't need those headlights on. Built into this ECU's logic is going to be a delay because if you're driving under an overpass, you don't want your headlights to turn on and then back off suddenly. It's gonna look silly. That might even look like you're trying to flash your lights at the driver ahead of you because you don't like the way they're driving and that could lead to a road rage incident. Also pre-programmed into the logic of this computer is going to be what that threshold is for how bright it needs to be to turn the headlights off or how dark it needs to be to turn them on. A lot of times drivers wish they could change the sensitivity of that sensor because they feel that it comes on too soon or not soon enough. That sensitivity could be programmed differently in the ECU, but because it's a programming thing, most people don't go around to getting that done because it's expensive, 
Not a lot of mechanics will do it because it could void the warranty because you're tampering with the ECU and it's expensive because people have to know how to do that. Alternative to that, if you feel like the lights don't come on soon enough for you, you could trick the ECU into thinking that it's darker than it is by putting some sort of thing that mildly blocks light out of this area, like a piece of window tint or something that'll block this sensor just a little bit. It'll have less light coming into it at all times. So if you put the right amount of tint or other light blocking medium over this sensor, then it should turn on sooner. That method can be tricky too because you don't know just how much light you need to block out in order to get the sensitivity to be right where you want it. So what happens when one of these sensors fails? Well, unless the car has a secondary sensor it can go to in case this sensor fails, it will default to failing with the headlights on. Think about it, if someone bought a car, switched this to the auto position, and didn't touch that switch for 10 years, and then all of a sudden this fails, and they have no light at night, they're gonna be looking around, fumbling, trying to find that light switch, trying to figure out which direction they need to turn the switch, and in that window of time, they might have ended up in a head-on collision in the oncoming lane. So if you're diagnosing a car, and in the off position, the headlights are off, in the on, they're on, and auto, they're on no matter what, it could be this sensor. The data from this sensor can also be used for things other than the automatic headlights. A lot of modern cars have backlit screens on the dashboard and in order to get the brightness just right so during the day it's not too dark and at night it's not too bright, the ECU can take information from this sensor and vary the brightness based on how bright it is outside. Because of the location, however, this sensor can't be used to control automatic high beams. More data has to be considered in order to get those high beams to turn on and off at the appropriate times. If you'd like to learn how automatic high beams work, click on this video right here. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next Car Simplified video, and thanks for watching.